If you ask a bunch of people what's going to be one of the main advantages of having autonomous vehicles, safety is probably going to be pretty high up on that list. But how do we go about proving that autonomous vehicles are actually safer than human drivers? It's not as easy as you think. Hi, my name's Mahmood, I'm a self-driving car engineer, and I talk to a lot of people about autonomous vehicles, and you'll be surprised at how many people take the safety of autonomous vehicles for granted. They think that, of course, autonomous vehicles are going to be better. Humans are fallible creatures. Over 93% of accidents on the road are a result of human error. Bring on the robot overlords, we're ready, we shouldn't be at the wheel anymore. But safety, when it comes to autonomous vehicles, isn't so straightforward. For example, back in 2009, Google had their self-driving car and they wanted to program it really safely. So they made it follow all the road rules in the way that they've been written. And it was a mess. Not because they couldn't get it to follow the rules. They did. They got it to do that really well. But the problem was that humans don't exactly follow the rules of the road while they're driving. So when the vehicle went up to a four-way stop intersection, it knows, according to the road rules, that it has to wait for the other vehicles to come to a complete stop before it can move ahead. The problem is they didn't. They came to a rolling stop, which meant that the behavior that's outlined in the road rules didn't quite match up with real life. So Google had a bit of a conundrum on their hands. Do they build a vehicle that adheres to the road rules exactly, but drives in a way that humans don't expect? Or do they play loose with the road rules a little bit and build a vehicle that drives in a way that other humans expect it to? It's a tough one. So since the line between the actual rules and what the vehicle has to do out on the road is a little bit blurry and grey, then we need to make sure that the vehicle is actually going to be safe when it's out in the environment that it's actually going to be in. Proving whether something is safe or not safe isn't exactly straightforward. One of the main ways that people think that we should test out if these vehicles are safe is by having some sort of supervised public trial where the vehicles are driving out on the road with the general public while making sure that the vehicle can be stopped by using something like a safety driver until the vehicle has enough vehicle miles under its belt that we can say, okay, it's safe now. Waymo One is currently running a robo-taxi service in East Valley in Phoenix, Arizona, where members of the general public can hail a Waymo robo-taxi to come and pick them up. If, like me, you're not anywhere near Arizona, and you're not going to be anytime soon, and you want to see what it's like driving in one of these vehicles, you should check out JJ Rix's YouTube channel, where he films his rides on these Waymo vehicles and uploads them. And if you visit his website, jjrix.com, you can see a list of all the different types of events that have happened along his rides. These include close calls by vehicles cutting out in front of the vehicle. If you look at JJ's videos, you'll see a few close calls, but you won't really see any crashes. And that's because vehicle crashes are actually quite rare. There's about one fatality every 100 million miles driven by a car. That's really rare. And that gives us a little bit of a problem. Because if we have an autonomous vehicle, and let's assume this autonomous vehicle is quite safe. How long would we need to drive the vehicle for in order to be sure that the vehicle is safer than a human? It's sort of like flipping a coin. If you think of a coin as a fair coin that is half of the time it'll land on tails, the other half it'll land on heads, how many times do you think you need to flip a coin in order to make sure that it's fair to within 1%, so 51, 49, 49, 51 or 50, 50? The answer is 10,000 times to be 95% sure that the coin is fair. That's a lot of flips. So with a coin, it's 50% whether you land on one side or the other, but you still need to flip it 10,000 times to make sure that it's fair. So if we have something as rare as a fatality that happens once every 100 million miles driven, how many miles does an autonomous vehicle need to drive before making sure that it's safer than a human driver? It's about 10 billion. It's about 10 billion miles. Billion. With a B. And look, I'm throwing around the word billion like it's nothing, but a billion is a lot, and humans aren't really good at visualizing a lot. To put it in perspective, a million seconds is around 11 and a half days. A billion seconds is just under 32 years. 
In 2019, Waymo drove around 6.1 million miles in their autonomous vehicle testing program. To get anywhere close to the number of miles they need to drive to prove that their vehicles are safe, they'd need to have a thousand as many times vehicles out on the road as they do right now. If you had a fleet of 100 autonomous vehicles, which is a modestly sized fleet, and you could drive them 25 miles per hour, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, it would take over 300 years in order to prove that your vehicles are safer than a human driver. And anytime you upgraded the firmware, you'd need to start all over again. For all intents and purposes, it's completely unrealistic to prove that autonomous vehicles are safe purely by driving them around on the road until we're sure that they're safe. A tech company would have had to put out 1,000 autonomous vehicles, have them driving around 24-7 since the year 1990 using the technology from the 80s in order to prove by today that they're safer than humans. So what do we do? How do we make sure that autonomous vehicles are actually safe? Last month, Waymo did something really, really cool. They released this white paper with an accompanying blog post that spoke about some of their approaches to proving that their vehicles are safe. It's not scientific or conclusive proof by any stretch. It's experimental, and they'll be the first to tell you that. But this is a pretty interesting way to delve a little bit into what it would look like if the autonomous vehicle was about to get into an accident. They took crash data from one of their deployed areas. In this case, they focused on Chandler in Arizona. Could it be any other place? I'm so sorry. Focusing on Chandler in Arizona allows them to look at cases which are similar to where the vehicles from Waymo are currently deployed. So Waymo took the crash scenario that happened and programmed it into a simulated environment. What that allowed them to do is to insert a virtual model of the Waymo vehicle to see how it would behave given the circumstances that it finds itself in. What they found was actually pretty helpful. In every single case where the Waymo vehicle was in place of the initiator, the accident was avoided completely. When the Waymo vehicle was the responder, i.e. the one getting crashed into, in almost all cases, the collision was completely avoided, which is awesome. In the remainder of the cases, the collisions were mitigated. What Waymo means by that is that the severity of the collision became less than what the severity was when it was human drivers. So overall, a safer outcome than the human driver. The only cases where there wasn't any difference between the human driver and the Waymo vehicle was in cases where the responder was rear-ended by another vehicle, which I think it's fair enough to give Waymo a pass. You can't really do too much about getting rear-ended. That's what she said. I've put a link in the description below to Waymo's blog post and the white paper about it. I suggest giving it a read. The blog post, at least, is really easy to read and understand for most people. What Waymo have done here isn't really to scientifically prove the safety of the vehicles. It's just an example. They're experimenting and showing the result of that. The signs are good, don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a great result, but it doesn't conclusively prove the safety of the vehicle in the same way that driving the vehicles around for hundreds of years on the road would. But since we've already established that it's pretty impractical to prove the safety of a vehicle just by driving it around, how do we go about ensuring that the vehicles are safe, or at least somewhat safe, or safe enough to drive around on the roads? I have an idea. We actually already do this, not for autonomous vehicles, but for humans. If you think about it, if you squint and take a couple steps back, you can think of a human driving a vehicle as an autonomous system, because I guess humans are autonomous technically, and a driving exam before a driver's license is awarded to someone is a condensed series of tests. It's a subset of what you'd actually experience when you're out on the road. And if they perform in those tasks to a standard that a driving instructor deems satisfactory and safe to put out on the road, then they get their driver's license. Why can't we do the same for autonomous vehicles? And in this case, we can have much more rigorous testing. We can standardize these tests, we can automate them, and we can have them go for longer and be much more extensive than what we put a human through. But put very simply, 
where I think the future will be around the regulation of autonomous vehicles and how they're allowed to be put on the road in a standardized way, by the way, not in an exemption style process, is something very similar to a driver's license test. But it definitely has its challenges. I think the big major communications hurdle that the industry will need to get over is how to convince people that 100% safety is not realistic from an engineering point of view. What's the best way to talk about this without scaring people? Thank you so much for watching. If you found this at all useful, please consider subscribing. Like 90% of people who watch these videos aren't subscribed. So it'd really, really help if you do. If you have any questions about autonomous vehicles or are confused or scared about anything to do with the tech, leave a comment below. I'll either answer it or make a video about it. I really, really enjoy communicating these sorts of ideas to people. And if you have a question, chances are there's tons of other people as well who will never leave a comment. So if you do, you'll be doing them a favor. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe, comment, all that stuff. Uh, stay safe, uh, even if it's not 100% safe.